Hey, it's me, it's Arthur. Thank you for watching this video. Today, we're going to talk about the top 10 mistakes new comic book publishers make. I've had a lot of requests for this video after we did the series on mistakes new writers make and new artists make. So, today we're going to talk about the actual publishers. Top 10 mistakes that new comic book publishers make. Sadly, I see some old ones making these same mistakes repeatedly. So let's just jump into it. Number one, crowdfunding is your business plan. Why is crowdfunding your business plan? Really, crowdfunding is your only business plan. That's it. Kickstarter, Indiegogo, that is legitimately your only business plan. So if it doesn't work out, if it's not funded, there's no comics. That's your business plan. I'm not a business major by any means, but to me that's crazy. If you want to make comic books, if you are calling yourself a comic book publisher, a comic book company, and your job is to put out your own comics as well as comics created by other people, and all of this is dependent upon getting crowdfunded, that is crazy. That's saying a lot. That's saying that you don't have the working capital to not only fund your own books, but to fund other books. That's saying that if the crowdfunding efforts don't work out, nobody's getting printed. Nobody's getting published. Nothing happens without crowdfunding. Now, it's cool to do crowdfunding as an individual. Go for it. Launch your Indiegogo. Launch your Kickstarter. Do whatever. Because you're solely responsible for you and your creative team. You're not representing yourself as a company. You're not saying, hey, uh, I want all you other people to come and work with me. You're not doing any of that. But as a publisher, if Kickstarter, if Indiegogo is your one and only business plan and the only way, only means of generating revenue, you're in the wrong business. You are in the wrong business. And you're playing with fire because right now the crowdfunding arena is getting oversaturated by not just individuals but publishers, scam artists, all of that. Now I understand things cost money, but if you don't have the working capital to fund this, at least the production aspects of it, why are you in business? Why are you in business? Another mistake I see new comic book publishers make is they haven't learned from Marvel and DC. They haven't learned from Image. They haven't learned from Boom or IDW. And that thing that I want them to learn is hire people with an established fan base. It's cool to get the new talent, to foster the new talent, and plant that new talent in the ground and watch it bloom. I applaud anyone for doing that. But if you are a publisher and your job is to generate revenue, you need to surround that new baby talent with some established pros that have fan bases that you can utilize to sell your books. It's that simple. It's a no-brainer. It's a reason why you don't see that many new creators over at Image. They learned a long time ago, hey, some of these new talent can work out, some of it can't, but at the end of the day, we need some people with established fan bases to sell these books. Go look at it. Most of, I say, good 75% of Image Comics right now. Marvel and DC guys, get some established talent on your books 
if you're in the business of making money. It's that simple. The new people, they might have a breakthrough book. You never know. But if your whole lineup is just new talent with no fan base, you're making a grave mistake. A grave mistake. Again, get people with fan bases on these books. Now, can you be a newcomer with an established fan base that you've generated on social media? Of course. I think every publisher should look at crowdfunding, look at Kickstarter, look at um, Indiegogo. Look who's killing it. If you see somebody killing it individually on these platforms, snatch them up. Snatch them up. They've proven to have the ability to draw a crowd. To generate revenue. If you're not snatching them up, you're making a grave mistake. Next thing, and I touched on this a while ago, no funding. No funding. You have no money. You registered an LLC, you're calling yourself a company, you built a website, but you have no money in the bank. For this company. So that means even if you do a Kickstarter, you have no promotional budget, no marketing dollars, no money to fund travel to a period cons. You can't even pay for a table. Yet you call yourself a company. This is troublesome. This one hurts my head. This one hurts my head. How can you call yourself a product? Uh, forgive me. How can you call yourself a comic book company? If you have no distribution. How are you getting these books out, bro? How? There's no distribution. I've seen many, 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 many new comic book companies come into this industry with no plan of getting the books out to the public. Let's be honest, if you do a crowdfunding, a good percentage of that is creators backing other creators, followed by the Kickstarter or Indiegogo community, friends and family. You're not really generating a lot of new fans. Let's just be honest. So, Without a distribution network, how, how are you going to get these new fans? How are you going to get the buying public to buy your book? Let's look at Alterna Comics. For years, they've listed the stores in which you can buy their books on their issues. I think that's very smart, especially for an indie comic book company. Especially if you don't have a deal with Diamond. You don't need one. Establish a relationship with retailers. Let people know where they can buy your books. Get a comicology. Uh, get your books on comicology, on Amazon, on drive through Have those distribution channels, both physically and digitally, in place. As well as a website for your company. Let people know where they can buy these books. Because if they don't know, you're not going to get no money. It's all about supply and demand. You have a supply, you haven't created a demand for these books. You have to create a demand for these books. That's the next thing. You have to create a demand. Simply, well, I put it on my Twitter. My 12-year-old cousin has more Twitter followers than your company. Really, bro? You have 300 followers on Twitter. And you call yourself a company. That's troublesome. Not just for the company, but for anyone, any creator who signs a deal with you. You haven't created a demand for your product.
as a new company, you should be in the business of promoting said company, promote that brand, promote the books under that brand as well. You should be on every podcast, every YouTube channel, every blog you can think of. You should attend every con. You need to create a demand. So even if your business plan is the dreaded Kickstarter only, crowdfunding only, you create a demand for this project. And I'm not just talking about spamming Facebook groups. How annoying is that? Think of creative ways to market and promote your company as well as your books, as well as your creators. Supply and demand. It's basic business. You have to supply, you created the book. Hopefully you have a inventory. Now create a demand for people who want to buy those books. Establish a distribution network for people to buy those books. Don't mind me. I'm just looking for you, for your company at a convention. Don't give me, the, oh, the coronavirus is here, so all the cons are canceled. No. No, no, no. Bad comic book company. I didn't see you at the cons before corona, and I haven't seen you after corona. Bad, bad, bad. Why aren't you at every convention you can get to whether it's a localized con, uh, con whether it's a local con or a regional con whatever the case may be why isn't your company at cons well we did three last year three you are a company your job your one job as a publisher is to sell these books if you don't have distribution channels, if your books are not in stores, they're not sold digitally, how are you selling these books? You need to be at cons. As many as you can get your hands on. And don't just rely on, well, this creator of this book is going to this con. He's going to carry some of the books. No. As the company, the company needs to be at every con they can go to. Doesn't matter if it's a big con, small con, whatever the case may be. Your business is to sell these books. The moment you lose sight of that, it's the moment your company fails. So you have to decide, am I in the crowdfunding game or am I in the book selling game? Because that's what comic books are, they're books. As a publisher, your job is to sell these books. That simple. This next one's a toughie. I notice a lot of new comic book publishers, they have too many titles. Too many number ones. Advent Comics, for example, had a billion number one issues for 10 years. They recently celebrated their anniversary as high notice. But even when they came out with an issue two or three, it was months or years apart. And they're not the only ones doing this. I see a lot of new comic book companies with several number one issues. Several number one issues. And my cat's gone. He's gone. Several number one issues. And you have to wait six months to a year or even two or three years for the second issue. And you're a company. Individual creators come a little slack sometimes, but as a company, when you're trying to establish a brand, you just killed your fan base. I might have loved that number one issue. It was the best thing ever. Now, six, eight months down the line, still waiting, still waiting. Haven't read a second issue, forgot your story. When it does come out, no longer interested. You kill your readership. By having people wait months or years to get the rest of the story. Instead of pumping out, we're going to release ten titles. How about you release one? 
or two. Get those miniseries done, then move on. You'll be surprised at the results. Plus, this opens you up to a different market. Now you can sell graphic novels, and guess what? That's a whole other level. A whole other level. Graphic novels. You'll be surprised at where you can sell graphic novels. You'll be surprised. I'm going to be the next Marvel or DC Comics. Hmm. Delusional. In our minds, sometimes we have these grand ideas of success. We do. We all do. The delusional aspects come in when you're busy comparing yourself to a multi-billion dollar company or a multi-billion company. Or a multi-billion dollar company. That's where the delusion comes in. People forget. Companies like Marvel and DC, they've, have, they've had 75 plus years to establish their fan base. They've had 75 years to get bought and resold, bought and resold by bigger and bigger companies. So instead of striving to be the next Marvel or DC, let's see. Who else has been successful at this? Dark Horse? Boom? IDW? Alterna? Antarctic Press? Some of these medium to smaller companies have stayed afloat year after year. Find out why. What have they done to stay around? TKO, they're the new kid on the block. Their mission is, they got the Silicon Valley guys behind them. They want to disrupt the industry. They're like, hey, we're going to release the whole miniseries at once. If you want to buy the graphic novel, cool. If you want to buy the single issues, cool. What are you doing to establish longevity for your company? Not only that, what are you doing to make sure your company... If you're only creating comics as a company, publishing comics, strictly to sell comic books and you have no interest in nothing else, you're not going to make that much money. You're not going to make that much money. Now, if you are creating a comic book company and your end goal was to become a multimedia company, yes, you can make a lot of money at that. You can so those delusional dreams have to start somewhere in reality. Establish a firm foothold within the industry. Create a fan base for yourself. Create a brand, marketable characters. I don't care how great the story is. If the characters are not likable, if you haven't packaged them where you can market them and sell toys or lunch boxes or whatever in Walmart or wherever. You lost. You have to create something that you can market. It's that simple. It's that simple. But anyway, those are just some of the mistakes that I've noticed new comic book companies making. They tend to have one business plan, strictly relying on crowdfunding. There's no distribution plans. There's no looking at talent and seeing what that talent can do for that company as far as a fan base. There's no distribution systems in place. There's no plan to go out and meet the public, walk with the people, talk with the people. Let's sell some books with the people. There needs to be an established business plan. At the end of the day, what is this business plan and how are you going to execute it? Well, the plan was. The plan was. That's the answer I've had more than two or three publishers tell me. The plan was. And now the plan is crowdfunding or nothing else. So, again, I posed this question earlier. Are some people in... The game of crowdfunding 
or are they in the game of publishing comics? Let me know in the comments if there's anything I left out or you want to add. Let us know in the comments. We're here for you. Please like and subscribe. I'm the Indie Comic Book Guy. And notice, lighting. Yay! See y'all in the next video. Peace twice.